If you're ready to consolidate all of your sales and get all your information in one place, then look no further than this video. I'm going to be going into detail about building an automated process that captures sales data that comes through a card processor like Stripe or PayPal and automatically puts that data in an Airtable database. So if that's of interest to you, stick around and let's get into it. Hey, my name is Gareth Pronovost. I am the owner at Gap Consulting, where we help you to organize and automate your business and life. If that's of interest and you want to learn more about how we do that, do check out the links below that go to our website. And don't miss our free Airtable crash course. It's going to get you up to speed quickly and easily in Airtable. I'll have a link floating up around here somewhere. But without further ado, let's just get into the heart of this video. We are talking about accepting a payment through a payment processor most commonly folks are using Stripe and PayPal tending to you know, kind of be the, uh, the small business market that, that seems to be captured by this. So if you're processing payments through either of those softwares, then this automation is going to be killer for you. The whole goal here is that we want to capture that data and bring it into a database. And there are a lot of reasons we might want to do that. You know, from a high level, you could say, well, listen, Gareth, why wouldn't I just keep this data in my card processor and I can just log into my Stripe account whenever I want to? Number one reason that you might want to bring it into Airtable or some other database is because not all of your payment information is going to live in one processor. For example, sometimes we get paid via invoices in QuickBooks and those are very different than the invoices we're dealing with in Stripe. And then sometimes we wind up paying things out via PayPal. There are a lot of different you know, ways that you can attack this and a lot of different softwares you might be using. Now, the other thing is sometimes you really want to get granular and run reports on specific things and Stripe and PayPal and all of those softwares. They're not always the most friendly for generating reports. So in my opinion, it is a lot easier to bring this data into Airtable and see all of that just living in one place up front and then run whatever reports you need when you need them. So let's go ahead and jump in here and I'll show you the really simple two step or two table database we need to set up in order to make this work. So first we've got contacts and then we're going to track income or sales in a separate table. So one at a time, contacts are really straightforward. We're going to run a first name and a last name, capture an email address and have a phone number. I then like to, uh, in the primary field, that is the leftmost field, I like to then run a full name. So I'm combining first and last name. So that's part one. That's pretty straightforward. And then of course, a contact will connect to sales. This is, if you're familiar with these uh, relationship types and database speak, this is a one to many relationship because one contact can have multiple sales connect that they connect to, but each sale is only going to connect to one contact. So this is called a one to many. Now inside of the sales table, we have a sales ID. We can come back to this and kind of give it a fancy ID at the end. Uh, but then moving past there, we're going to have that linked relationship to our contact table. Again, a one to many. So one sale links to one contact, one contact links to many sales, we hope. And then, uh, of course, we're also looking at an amount of the sale, a purchase type. And this could be a connection to another table. If you are tracking inventory or something like that in this particular case, though, to keep it simple, I'm just using a single select field. And then we're also going to track the date and time paid. Now, one other thing that we can do once we have some information in here is actually run back into our contacts and bring in total uh, lifetime value or total income generated per client or per contact. And in order to get this, we can just use a quick roll up field that looks at our sales amounts and sums them, right? So if you're new to roll up fields, really what this is doing is it's saying, hey, I'm looking at all of the sales that are connected to each individual contact and I'm going to sum it up. OK, but we're here to talk about automation. So let's jump into my Zapier and let's take a look. So we're going to start a new Zap and we are going to find the payment processor that we are processing these payments through. Now, in my case, we use Stripe a lot, but it's not the only processor out there, of course. So I'm going to be building this from Stripe's from the perspective of using Stripe, but the steps are the same no matter what processor you're using. So I'm going to go ahead and select Stripe here. And then the trigger event is going to be anytime someone's credit card is charged. If you only do new customer or new event, uh, you know, it's going to limit what you are able to do here. So in my uh, opinion, you know, going ahead with a uh, new charge is the way to go. 
You can also, if you run some sort of subscription type things, you might want to look at canceling subscriptions and how you can automate around that. But for now, we're just taking a simple approach of every time a card is charged, we want this automation to fire. I'm going to go ahead and work through this automation, but of course, I'm going to have to blur a lot of stuff out to keep private information private. So forgive me that. But the first thing you need to ask or answer really is, are you going to include failed charges? So, you know, bottom line here, if you want to bring in every single charge, like every time somebody tries to make a payment, cool. Personally, I tend to turn this off and I don't want to include those failed charges because if somebody's card didn't go through, I don't need to record it as income in my database. So I'm going to go ahead and post all this and then we test the trigger. And when we test the trigger, of course, this is where we're going to pull in some live data. So this is data that you will yourself, it will be completely dependent on what was last charged on your account. So you're going to see a lot of different pieces of information here. Uh, in this particular case, I have an amount and an amount captured. By the way, the amount captured uh, does not include the decimals, but it's the same as the amount as you see here. And uh, there is a lot of different pieces of data that come along with this. One of the most important is the description. If you are, as I mentioned, running a subscription type of service, this is going to be uh, an important thing that you might want to track. So if you're going to track a subscription creation or a subscription payment, you'll probably want to note that. And that usually falls in line with the description. Uh, beyond that, you're also going to get information that is unique to this particular person. So you're going to get the recipients or the receipt email and, uh, and you'll know who the person who made that actual payment is. So moving on from here, see, we also have the description and the customer information. So all of this information is available inside of the, uh, the transaction itself. So once we have that, the next big step that I strongly recommend you uh, consider including, you might want to apply a filter here. And if you're not familiar with filters in Zapier, a filter will test to see if certain conditions are met. And if they are, it will proceed. If they are not, it will it'll stop. So the automation will not move forward. The reason you might want to do a filter is because sometimes there are certain payments in your business. You might have a different automation that is you know built and serves that particular payment type. Uh, you know, there are many different reasons that you might only want to bring in certain payments into this database. So if that applies to you, make sure that you have a way that you can communicate that here in a filter. So let's say, for example, uh, I did not want to bring in any Calendly events because Calendly sometimes processes through our Stripe as well. So I can choose some uh, one of the details here and I will say I want to make sure that the uh, the detail, in this case, the subscription data nickname does not uh, contain the word Calendly. So this is an example of something you can put forth. That way you can have separate automations that are tracking separate types of payments in your business. Because if you notice, we didn't have the ability in the trigger to say, hey, we only want to do this for certain payments. And so since we're doing it for all payment types, you might want to apply a filter here. Now, since this condition is not met, we get the green light here. And this is telling us, hey, your zap would have continued with this information. But if for whatever reason we do see Calendly in the future, we won't perform this process. Now, the next step is going to be to find this person in our database. And so we're going to look in Airtable in this next step. And if you've not used this function before, we have the ability to find a record in Airtable. Now, quick pause. This is something you might want to have tried to build inside of Airtable automations. Unfortunately, we don't yet have this capability. We cannot find a record using Airtable automations as of today, and we don't have the ability to interact with Stripe yet. So perhaps those things change in time, but as of today, we need to build it in a third party tool. So I'm going to find a record. And the easiest thing that we can use to find the record is an email address. So I'm going to find our Stripe payment database. That is the database that we're playing with here. And we are going to find a contact. So we look in the contact database. We choose the email field. Email is always the best thing because it's always unique. And we can find that based on the email address that was provided at the time of this payment being made. 
So I select this email address. It comes out as cust space email. Again, I need to keep people's information uh, blurred out here, but hopefully you can still follow along. And we are going to look for that email in our database. Now, if we don't find it, we want to make sure that we create a new client for that record. So we can click this box here, create the Airtable record if it doesn't yet exist. And then we come down and we can fill out information about that person. So we can bring in their name and bring in their email. In this case, I'll just use the email address and I'll just create a, a customer using that email address. Now, we're gonna go ahead and give this a test. So scrolling down here, we say test and review and we pop back into our Airtable database. And sure enough, now we see that we have a new uh, contact created with the email address that we just we're running a check on. Again, I have to keep it blurred, but you get the idea. Okay, so now that we have the contact either found or created in this step, now we can move on into our final step, which is recording the actual payment itself. So again, I'm gonna pop into Airtable for this last step, and I'm going to create a new record because this time I'm always going to create a record for that sale. And I'm going to go ahead and bring that in here and map us to the appropriate database. In this case, we called it Stripe Payment. And now, of course, we're going to the sales table. And from here, the pieces of information we need to bring in are going over to the sales table, the contact. So we already found the contact in our last step. We also need to bring in the amount and we need to bring in the purchase type and the date and time paid. So let's get all those pieces of information, contact, amount, purchase type, and the date time paid. So the amount is fairly simple. It appears in our Stripe uh, charge here. It's called amount, in this case, $49. The contact is gonna be the record ID of the Airtable record that we found in the previous step. So in order to get that, make sure you're using the record ID. It always starts with lowercase rec. From there, I'm going to assign the purchase type. In this case, this, pro this particular product was a quick start mastermind. And so uh, whatever you know, verbiage you've used in setting up your different products inside of Stripe, that's what you're gonna find here. But it's called the customer subscriptions data plan nickname or something close to that. Lastly, we have the date time paid. And so again, we can come in and search for the date and we have a created format here. Uh, it's called created formatted is the field type. And this is going to tell us when this payment was processed, when the payment was created in Stripe. So from here, we can go ahead and click continue. And I'm gonna say test and flipping back into Airtable, we're going to see now that we have, this is linked to a contact. And even though the contact is blank and, uh, and then we have an amount and a, a, the type of sale that was made and the date and time that it was received. Uh, and then you can get a little fancier with your sales ID. So you can say whatever you want in order to help you identify what sale that was. Often something like combining the contact with the purchase type or the purchase date uh, might be something helpful that you, know, you can put together. But moving on from here, there are so many different things you can do once you've built this automation. You can build reports that are sending you updates on a weekly or monthly basis about revenue into the business based on you know, these automated processes. Uh, you can send Slack messages automatically to let teammates know that certain things now need to happen because this, uh, this payment was received. There's so many different angles and, and, uh, and different directions you can take this once you've automated the process like this. I hope you found this to be really helpful, but do let me know in the notes below or in the comments below what different things you are automating with your payments. As always, I hope you found that to be very helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing on by our website and check out all the resources we've put together. We have a free Airtable crash course that will get you up to speed quickly and easily in Airtable. And we also offer some paid services, including hourly consultations with our experts, we have some online group coaching programs and courses. And for the very advanced needs, we can build a bespoke project for you from scratch. So swing on by and I look forward to connecting with you soon.